Hey guys, this is Vice from Vice Agis, and we are going to continue the history MCRT class sixth uh, series. Actually, this is becoming very lengthy because it has about twelve chapters, and it is all uh, very important chapters also. So I cannot skip any chapter, and I cannot merge any chapters also. Okay, because I don't want to make the videos lengthy at all. Uh, just confuse the chronology because we are just beginning history series. Uh, NCRT, I mean, Spectrum. Anyway, we have done the modern history, but ancient history this is the first series, so I don't want you uh, to get confused. That is why I am doing chapter by chapter, and I am doing it very. What is a very fast so that we don't take much time also, and uh, this is the tenth chapter. This is about uh, some Chinese travelers who visited India at uh, various uh, times, and also about the uh, start of Bhakti movement. Okay, just the initial story only. There is no much details, so we will try to do it quickly as usual. Uh, so let's begin. Okay, chapter ten, the travelers. The chapter name is something else. It is traders, kings, and pilgrims. Okay, I just named it travelers because that is the most important takeaway from this chapter. So here. Last chapter, I also I have told you the northern black Polish ware. Okay, northern because the north is the place where it was there. Black because it was black in color, and polished because of that shine which it had. So that is how that pottery became famous in this particular age during the Iron Age, you can tell, or uh, closer to the uh, Gupta Age or the Mauryan Age. This is the famous pottery. Okay, or maybe after the Chalcolithic Age, you can tell. Okay, much details are not uh, not there about Chalcolithic Age in this particular chapter. We'll see it in subsequent classes. Okay, so specially uh, bowls and plates were used. Uh, were found from uh, several archaeological sites throughout the subcontinent. So not much important. South India was famous for gold, spices, especially pepper and precious stones. Pepper was partially valued in Roman Empire, and it was called black gold. Okay, they used to give gold and take away the pepper. So you can imagine how much valuable pepper is. Okay, the spices in the South India, you can tell. That is why they had good trade relations with Kerala and Tamil Nadu regions. Okay, the present-day Kerala and Tamil Nadu, they had a huge trade relation with the Rome and also with the Arabs. And British came and spoiled everything. Okay, so that we'll see in later later chapters. So. By sea, by land, by everything they had, and uh, Roman gold coins have been found in South India. Okay, that is how they established or proved that fact. And this is again some poem. We don't need it. It's about trade. Uh, traders explored several sea routes. Some of these followed the coast. Uh, they there were other across others across the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal, where sailors took advantage of the monsoon winds. Okay, monsoon in geography also while teaching I told you. Uh, the ships and all at that time was not motorized it was all based on the wind okay the sail boats so it has to depend on the wind so it's like one season they'll come whenever the wind is flowing towards india another season when the wind is going away from india it will uh, go back from there so that is why even the monsoon is actually named by the arabians okay they named it uh, from the term mausam which is an arabic word for that uh, season okay so mausam we also have the project mausam you should be knowing about it in current affairs so that is a story about the arabs coming into india So again uh, about the kingdoms, this Muvendra I had told you in one of the other videos also. Muvendra actually in Sangam poems it is mentioned and it referred to three kings. Okay, three chiefs from Ko Chola, Cheras and Pandyas. The Cholas will later again reemerge after many centuries. You will see it later in medieval India, but in ancient India it's a different Chola dynasty. Okay, and these three together were called the Muvendra, and they had uh, two centers of power each. Okay, like one will be an inland port kind of thing and one in the coast. So they had every three chiefs. Okay, so that means six six places are there, but only two places are important. One is this Pohar or Kaveri Patnam, and uh, it is the port of the Cholas. So Cholas, Chera, Pandyas, all three are there. Cheras is in the Kerala region. Cholas and Pandyas are there in the uh, Tamil Nadu region. Okay, and the capital cities and all will keep varying. Uh, I think uh, Madurai is uh, related to Pandya, and for Chola they had lot of capitals. So we we'll learn it when we learn the next stage of Cholas. Okay, the medieval stage. Now let's continue this. So here again it's mentioned Madurai, capital of Pandyas, and uh, Pohar and Kaveri Patnam, Cholas. Okay, just remember that as of now. Now uh, the chief did not collect regular taxes. Okay, so you should know that chief did not collect regular taxes. Instead, they demanded, they demanded and received gift from people. Okay, and another way to get money. Okay, they also went on military expeditions and collected tribute. So wherever they go and conduct or raid that place, they'll get tribute from there. They kept some for some of the wealth. Uh, they come ke some wealth they kept it with themselves and others what they did they distributed with whom with the supporters uh, members of family soldiers poets everywhere they distributed okay after keeping some for themselves and sangam poems you know they were like uh, praising the chiefs okay lot of poems are the theme will be praising the kings and they be often rewarded with precious stones gold horses elephant chariots and fine clothes around 200 years later a dynasty known as the satavahana as i told you in one of the video one of the subsequent Another subsequent dynasties. 
these satavahanas became powerful in the western india okay the important ruler is gautami putra c satkarni okay even a movie is there uh, it's a like period film kind of thing so i also have not watched it yet but might be a good movie try to watch it it's, it's not in hindi language it's in some other south indian language but maybe youtube it has the uh, dubbed version of it try to watch it whenever you have time and uh, inscription uh, we know about him from an inscription composed on behalf of his mother okay gautami so the name itself you see it's taken from the mother's name usually it is not a tradition usually they take the father's name only but here it is gautami putra sri satkarni okay that is how they named it uh, satavana rulers were known as the lords of the dakshina patha again one important factual information which dynasty was known as the lords of the uh, dakshina patha that is the southern uh, way that is uh, satavahana rulers okay so they were leading in the south at that time uh, sent in their army across all the places now the story of silk route i showed you the map in one of the videos and uh, the rich glossy colors of silk as well as its smooth texture so silk they are just uh, telling good and good things about uh, silk uh, it's not something which is grown in the soil you know right it's from the silk worm okay in present day we say the seri culture and chinese were masters in that technology and also uh they were uh, great exporters at that time okay so that is why they had that silk route so whichever route they go the path they followed it ca- came to be known as silk route that is how the name came and now they are trying to make in in the present day also one belt one road and maritime silk route they are trying to regain that the entire road belt across the world okay they want to be the most powerful nation in the world china so chinese rulers sent gifts of silk to rulers in iran and west asia because they had that in plenty they used to give that as gift okay that is how they established their trade relations okay even to rome and it was very expensive it is brought from china along dangerous roads so the routes are all very dangerous and also what happened is many other kingdoms what you did what they did was they will uh, try to capture the roads which which is in the end route of it okay so that they can uh, create check post and then create uh, so get payments tax and also it's a very easy way to get money okay because it's a very long route there will be lot of places there where you can get taxes okay so that is what other kingdoms did and even attacked by robbers okay so the best known of those rulers who controlled the silk route were the kushanas okay kushanas you will learn again lot of kings we have to learn in subsequent chapters so satavahanas we saw kushanas we saw and uh, this is again telling about lot of uh, branches about the silk route it's old route so we don't need much information kushanas were amongst the earliest rulers of the subcontinent to issue gold coins okay that is one important fact one of the earliest okay and uh, so guptas also you will know that guptas had it in plenty that is the next dynasty it will come next most powerful dynasty uh, then spread of buddhism is also important that is where kushana ruler kanishka comes into picture okay kanishka had a court poet ashwagosha these court poets are very important okay uh, like in uh, later phase you will learn about samudra gupta his court poet will be harisena okay and uh, this uh, kanishka is ashwagesh ashwagosha and later you will have someone called i think uh, for harsha dynasty there will be banabatta okay and also the books will be important like here he has this ashokosha has written a book like buddha charita okay these people are related to buddhism harsha the uh, banabatta he will write about uh, uh, harsha charita about harsha itself okay and uh, there will be one more i think uh, ravi kirti okay ravi kirti is the uh, court poet of uh, pulikeshan 2 okay pulikeshan second is the chalukya ruler which we'll again see in subsequent chapters so i told four names already so that's the best way upsc can frame a master following question okay ashokosha uh, of kanishka banabatta of uh, harsha ravikirti of pulikeshan 2 and uh, harisena of samudra gupta okay i just uh, got remind of those names so just shared with you okay so he, they used to write in sanskrit okay so that is basic information and another thing mahayana buddhism actually came there okay whether buddhism when we learn in detail we don't like they have four buddhist councils okay after that actually in the modern days two more has happened i think six or seven is there in total but uh, during this ancient history time four buddhist councils happened at different different places the place names are important who is the president of that is important i i am making a table for it i'll publish it soon in the facebook page uh, also when i'll discuss when we do the, i'll tell you when we discuss the buddhism chapter in detail in any uh, higher classes so uh, kanishka was the one who conducted the fourth buddhist council and that too in kashmir okay Buddha, kanishka had a rule over uh, northern part and northwestern part up to kashmir okay he had a great extent that is why also we saw like he had a great control over the uh, chinese silk route also okay and uh, in the fourth council only this uh, hinayana mahayana split happened okay between the buddhism okay hinayana was the original teachings of uh, buddha more simplistic one and uh, mahayana is the 
uh, another one which became the biggest one later okay most of the names which we learned many scholars everyone be related to mahayana only i think nagarjuna is one important name which you will learn later uh, so similar way okay many things are there related to mahayana buddhism there are a lot of things how it is different from hinayana that and all we'll see and the uh, people tree became their symbol that we know already the enlightenment of buddha we have seen that uh, then um, uh, these are sculptures okay mathura textile i already told you mathura Ga- gandhara and all we'll be learning then bodhisattva concept is based on the uh, mahayana actually in 2017 prelims they asked a question uh, bodhisattva uh, padmapani or something where is that sculpture found and the choices were ajanta alora and many other caves answer is actually ajanta cave okay so uh, it will be there in ncrt itself if you have covered ncrt it would have been done okay so again uh, bodhisattva what is the concept is like it is not like one person go for their own self uh, uh, what to say uh, uh, that uh, like getting get becoming this uh, buddha kind of thing that becoming the wise one becoming the spiritual one that is the only that's not the only thing like getting enlightenment for themselves is not the only goal it is like helping others also to uh, uh, get into this phase okay like whoever is there they'll support them okay they remained in the world to teach others and help others okay that is one difference between hinayana and mahayana okay hinayana were only about self thing but mahayana is about uh taking others also along with you okay so the enlightenment will be a little bit delayed in kind of in this mahayan i saw a statement in one mock test uh, like similar statement like the delaying of uh, this thing enlightenment process which is which is it is in which thing like uh, hinayana mahayana or vajrayana there are many phases they gave answer will be mahayana okay now buddhism also spread to western and southern india where dozens of caves were there okay so buddhism jainism both had spread to south india that we will see later now uh, they were uh, often located near passes through the western ghats again some locations in south india not much important now these are two images the left one is actually uh, an image from uh, buddha of the mathura okay and the uh, uh, right one is actually a taxila so that means this right one is if you see it has these dress and all this dress and this drape drapes and this uh, what a little more detailing is there right so this is all a uh, greek a uh, greek influence you can tell greek uh, greco roman that kind of influence is there that is why this is a little more detailed but this is the more of indian version in the mathura region okay so you should seeing the pictures a lot of different you itself can make it up the, the mudras and all is kind of same but it's like if you see this is more calm and composed and uh, the hairstyle is different that this halo is there so these kind of some difference if you see this picture so for two seconds you itself can make at least five six differences in your notes okay so that is what exactly you have to write also anyway try to get the notes also from somewhere but this pictures keep in mind it will be much more easier for you to make the answer okay so that is about uh, mathura and uh, this thing taxila forms of buddhist sculptures don't worry we'll see again this in details in subsequent classes this is again a karle cave in maharashtra we have seen it in other chapters also buddhism spread to sri lanka myanmar thailand many other places okay now in india buddhism which was actually the land where buddhism originated buddhism is very small or minority but in many other land many other countries buddhism is like a majority and it's a major religion so that is one irony you can tell okay the older form buddhism that is theravada buddhism is same as hinayana buddhism okay don't confuse like it's something else the older form or the original teachings of buddha it is the theravada buddhism which is same as hinayana buddhism pilgrims okay now some important names it's very important this chronology has been asked in upsc okay farsian uh, swanzan and i king okay some mnemonic you make f x i or something this is the order and that when which times they came that is also important this suan zang the second one one thing is like it's also called uh, hu huan sang okay at starting with h sometimes in some text it will be huan sang okay h u i n and t z a n g will be there but you should know this f x i and uh, uh, this is the order and one thing is like this uh, farsian came in the time of the guptas i think chandragupta 2 then suan zang came in the time of harsha dynasty if it was h actually if it was huan zang then it would have related easily h and h okay harsha i am telling you that so that you will be able to remember and i king i am not able to get much details here i will try to find out and tell you later but uh, this farsian and huan zang is very important guptas and harsha try to remember that it's not mentioned in this chapter but along with this i wanted to tell you that another thing they have mentioned here is like how they return back okay this farsian actually return back by the sea route okay and they also wrote uh, wrote a lot about the struggle because of the harsh climatic conditions and all he had to t- uh, spend some 90 days in ocean then he lost lot of uh, artifacts which he was he, he was he was carrying back and then uh, he reached indonesia then from there he took another ship and then reached china there's a big story to it but suan zang he actually went back by the 
um, uh, land route i think so i'll see i'll check and confirm in the same chapter to it will return okay so here uh, yeah right here fraction like i told uh, that journey which i told uh, 90 days to reach java and from there he took another ship to china and he carried back a lot of things which can be important uh, and what he did was when this problem was happening they had to throw away a lot of items into the sea so that the weight can be balanced he what he did is all his personal things he threw away but he did not throw away the, uh, the things which he collected okay uh, i don't know where it is mentioned some statues of buddha and uh, books okay so with all these only they went and developed this religion in their country actually everything was indian religion so that is about fasian return but who and sang which i told he returned back to the land route okay and uh, through central asia so here he took a gold silver sandalwood that's buddha statues which are made of gold silver sandalwood and 600 manuscripts that is handwritten books on the back of 20 horses and over 50 manuscripts were actually when he was crossing the indus it actually fell into that that is what it is told so that is about uh, his thing and he rest of the rest of his life he spent for converting all those things into chinese from sanskrit to chinese that is about fasian and huan sang hope you understood the difference and the timeline and also important artifacts which they carried away okay this is the best way i could explain now nalanda nalanda you know it's in news now also uh, because of something uh, i try to find out today's news it was there try to find it out confirm it and uh, unique center of uh, buddhist learning and this is actually you know, you know, many things if it's very hard to believe like you are preparing for the upsc and this nalanda entry is actually even more tougher than upsc okay you will see that whatever is mentioned here uh, the most uh, famous buddhist monastery i think it was uh, founded by uh, kumara gupta okay gupta dynasty try to confirm that also uh, what i remember is kumara gupta of gupta dynasty and uh, then uh, they follow the teachings of buddha in all sincerity the rules and monastery this was actually written by this person okay suan zhang in his doc, uh, documents he had written all these things and uh, discussions were held throughout the day old and young mutually helped each other then uh, from different cities people used to come here and try to get entry and there was a gatekeeper actually who will ask him very difficult questions and they have to tell some i think seven or eight something okay seven or eight out of every 10 were not able to answer okay so 10 people if they come only two will clear so it's kind of a upsc exam only okay so suan zhang is telling that much uh, good things about this particular nalanda dynasty so that all you should know nalanda gupta these are all related to uh, these people okay actually fasian came in that time gupta time this guy also came after that time maybe harsha dynasty time but they also visited nalanda because nalanda was a common buddhist place these people mainly came for visiting buddhist place only okay not to see the indian kings or indian kingdoms buddhism is what that attracted these chinese pilgrims now the beginning of bhakti okay so here uh, shiva vishnu and durga okay the uh, this thing you get uh, in rigveda if you remember it was indra uh, agni and uh, soma okay here in bhakti movement is shiva vishnu and durga and uh, very popular at that time and uh, actually in south there was sangam if you remember sangam later in also in the north parallelly bhakti movement also was going on later we learned the sufism and all later in i think uh, Uh, medieval era okay and this picture is actually of the varaha varaha is actually one of the incarnation of uh, vishnu if you know uh, the boar okay the pig kind of thing Bo- boar uh, thing he took and he was serving saving the earth so here earth is actually shown as mother earth okay actually a women's uh, uh, sculpture is shown and so this uh, boar incarnation is saving the mother earth that is the uh, meaning of this uh, sculpture and uh, if you see bhakti the idea was present in bhagavad gita okay this is some factual information and uh, include in the mahabharata that bhagavad gita you know already then uh, to abandon all the dharmas and take refuge in him this is what krishna told to arjuna so same way bhakti also had that same ideology like leave everything and then go in the uh, what to say refuge of the god the vishnu or shiva or whichever uh, for whichever you are showing that bhakti okay so then uh, devotional individual worship of god and goddesses so there is no sacrifice and all okay more than sacrifice it's about total devotion so lot of people name you have to learn in one subsequent chapters and also uh, one thing is that according to this system of belief if a devotee worships the chosen deity with a pure heart the deity will appear in appear in front of them okay in the form in which he or he or she may desire so in whatever form you may desire that god will come in front of you that is the belief so that that means it can take any form so maybe lion tree or any other form so that is why it is related to nature also that is the idea of bhakti okay bhakti devotion so again uh, bhakti word came from bhaj which means uh, divide and divide or share okay 
nothing else is important there again a poem not important hindu again i told you lot of times hindu india the word came from the river indus okay arabs or greeks they told like the people li living to the east of that river particular river they are indians that all that is what hindu or actual hindutva means not these uh, uh, ganesha idol being immersed in water or uh, jumping around the streets and claiming hindutva thing or the padmini things whatever uh, padmavati thing whatever is happening these are not the original hindu thing okay wearing uh, wearing this sacred thing and roaming around and killing all the other people these are all wrong things and it's not the idea of hinduism or hindutva okay at least they have studied their classics and cert these people would not have been there in the streets okay okay leave all that so elsewhere what was happening and this is the time when christianity emerged okay now the time when if you see i told you the before christ era is ending because christ is getting born okay in the bethlehem that you know the christ story so here lot of things about christ teachings and all there not much important for exam perspective interested people can read it uh, so christ teaching the appeal to ordinary people it spread through across india later when british people comes also in spectrum series i have told you in detail how the christian missionaries will come after 1813 charter act okay these kind of things you should also be able to retain okay which charter act who who was the governor general everything should be there in your mind okay i think it was wellesley try to confirm it the 1813 timeline Uh, okay so now some match the following it's i think very easy uh, because the chapter itself was very easy movender uh, it was actually chola chera and pandya uh, lords of the Daks dakshinapatha i told you satavahana rulers ashwagosha who was in uh, kanishka's court uh, he wrote the buddha charita and uh, bodhisattvas is actually related to mahayana buddhism i told you the delaying of uh, enlightenment uh, suan zang is actually the second person he is uh, a chinese pilgrim Uh, the timeline are not mentioned in chapter. Anyway, we'll see it in subsequent chapters. Other questions? Uh, Silk Route is there, and timeline is here again. Discovery of Silk Route, Chola Chera Pandya, mm -hmm. Roman Empire, Kanishka, Pasian came, then Suan Chan came. So this is the order with what we covered in this chapter. Okay, what are the main features of Bhakti? You basically can ask such questions also. What kind of evidence do historians use to find out what about trade and trade routes? Ordinary people. Bhakti. So there are things which you have to uh, get familiarized with. I hope this is helping you. Subsequent classes will be very helpful for you. Many terminologies I have told up to chapter ten. Make a note of all these things. Now we'll see chapter eleven soon. I'll come up with a video. Till then, thank you and have a nice day.